So yesterday I just finished the hike to the Acatenango volcano in Antigua and uh, I want to share some tips and some expectations versus reality that I experienced after doing this hike. The first is that the main hike itself to the base camp I thought was going to be extremely difficult and I wasn't sure if I was prepared for it and it definitely was difficult but it was not nearly as hard as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be nothing but steep inclines on like sand. And so it'd be really hard to get a footing and it'd be a struggle just to trudge your way up the mountain. And it is a lot of inclines, a lot of rocky surfaces, but it, it wasn't as sandy as I thought it would be. And it just, it wasn't as intense as I initially thought it would be. So that was a pleasant surprise. However, the other two hikes that you can do, which is the hike to get closer to the volcano called El Fuego. That's the one that you do after you reach your base camp and before you eat dinner. That's usually an optional hike and the sunrise hike. So you spend the night on the mountain and then before sunrise at like 4 a.m. you hike up to the peak of Catenango. And those are the two optional hikes and they were both way harder than I thought they were gonna be. I thought those two hikes were gonna be like easy, pretty quick add-ons to the main hike to base camp. But especially given that you had just spent the full day getting to base camp, they were exhausting. And those ones, those ones definitely were super steep, super sandy, hard to get a footing. The one to get to El Fuego from your base camp, you actually have to hike down a steep incline for like 30 minutes. Then you have to hike up a steep incline for another 30 minutes to get to the top. When you get to the top, it's super cold because it's dark, it's at night. And um, another thing is like, you're really hot while you're hiking, but then once you get to the top and once you stop moving, you get cold really, really fast. And then of course, once you get to the top, you hopefully see an eruption, but it's not guaranteed. And then you have to get back to base camp, which means you have to hike down 30 minutes, a steep incline and back up to base camp another 30 minutes. Was it worth it? Yeah, I definitely think it was worth it. I. If I were to do it again, I just wouldn't have as big of a dinner because it was a lot to hike on a full stomach. And also, you know, I did get to see an eruption, so that helped to make it worth it. If I didn't see one, um, I think it'd still be worth it just for the experience, just for the challenge of it. But it definitely made a big payoff to see like this lava blowing up into the air. And then the sunrise hike is another super steep hike, but you have to wake up at like 3.45. So this is after a full day of hiking, a full night of hiking. Your body's super tired, wake up super early. Then you go up this really steep incline. It's extra sandy to get up there. Once you do get up there, it's amazing because it's like full panoramic view of, I think like five or six volcanoes. And it's incredible. It's a little bit surreal actually, but the hike was like, especially when I'm half asleep, I was kind of feeling like maybe it wasn't going to be worth it to do that uh, until I got to the top. So it was super difficult. And then when you come down, it's so sandy that every step that you take you kind of slide forward a couple feet and it's almost like you're skiing coming down the mountain. If you have bad knees, if you're not up for a really difficult like cardio exercise, a really intense cardio exercise, then it might not be the best thing and it, you may be better served just like chilling at base camp and watching the volcano from there because you can still see it from there. But it's, uh, yeah, it was super challenging. So the hikes were like, the expectations that I had were different than the reality. Shoes, I was concerned that the shoes that I was wearing were gonna be inadequate because I just have like basically running shoes that have been pretty worn down over time so they didn't have a lot of tread on them. Since this trip was so last minute for me, I didn't prepare ahead of time. I didn't get proper hiking shoes. I didn't wanna buy proper hiking shoes because there wasn't enough time to break them in and it can be worse to do this crazy hike in brand new shoes. But I wore these and overall actually they were it, you can do it in like running shoes. Even if you had regular hiking shoes, you'd still be sliding everywhere on the sand and it would maybe make things a little bit easier, but overall I think you'll be fine. And then the sticks, I've never used hiking sticks before, but super glad that I rented them. You're on a slope one way or the other, like almost the whole, th the whole time. So having two hiking sticks definitely came in handy. Things that I would do differently if I were to do it again for that night hike, I just wouldn't eat a huge dinner because I was kind of feeling sick walking up to get to El Fuego. 
And then for the morning hike, maybe just taking some Advil or painkillers or something because your, your body's like super tired. It feels a little bit miserable in the moment when your knees are kind of sore and your legs are getting tired and you're hiking up this thing at four in the morning and perhaps conditioning beforehand, doing some hikes or like doing some extra cardio before taking the hike because the more that you can enjoy it and not think so much about the pain and the struggle, the, the better it will be. But I would do all three of the hikes again if I had the chance. Standing up on the top of a volcano and then seeing another one what erupt was, was wild. So I would definitely recommend it. I went with this tour company called V Hiking. The accommodations were fine. You're like in this hut and there are two people in each one with a sleeping bag. I thought it was warm enough. The restroom was nothing to envy. It was just like a hole in the ground. So that, you know, I had to use the woods once. But other than that, the, the staff was incredibly friendly. They gave you food, they gave you wine for dinner as well. And I would definitely recommend them. Um, there's a bunch of great companies, but V Hiking was like super family oriented, super friendly. And you could tell they really took pride in taking care of everybody and making sure they had the right headcount of everyone. And they will split this group of like 25 people. They'll split it up by like three sections. So if you wanna go faster, you can go with the first group. And if you wanna go slower, you can hang back with the third group. Definitely recommend them and I would definitely recommend the hike.